Good morning. Uh, I'm Lee Smith. This is Roy Williams. And uh, we're going to talk today about uh, taming the uh, Cessna 180, 185. The problem we have with wheel landings is people being timid about putting the forward pressure once we touch. The tail is very heavy on those aircraft. It takes about three people to pick that tail up in, into the air. And if you go around to the Sotabria that's over here, or some other, uh, there's a cub over here, one person can, can pick that tail up. And so you've got this big rudder with this light tail, and that makes the aircraft a lot easier to handle. The 180, on the other hand, we have a, a pretty good sized rudder, but the tail is so heavy. And once that tail starts to get out of alignment, it's very hard to bring it back into alignment. So we have to really focus on keeping the aircraft straight. So we are talking about doing the wheel landings. As we come down final, we have a set pitch attitude. Your nose will be roughly eight inches below the horizon. We're going to hold that attitude. The bottom of the wing is going to be flat. We're going to hold that attitude until we get down about three feet off the ground. The nose will slightly come up no more than an inch, slight round out. And as the, as the mains touch down, we'll be holding back pressure on the yoke. You'll feel the drag of the tire spin up. And at that point, we release that back pressure. All you're doing is releasing it, and you might ease forward a little bit. The nose should not really dip down much. It should pretty much stay where it's at, but the yoke will actually move an inch and a half, inch to inch and a half. If we're on grass, it might move as much as two and a half inches to keep the aircraft pinned. We let the aircraft then roll for about three seconds. Now what are we doing with power at that time at, when you're transitioning? What, what do we do with the power? So you're going to have a little bit of power on as you're coming into land. I do uh, my wheel landings with power on, but once the tires touch, power comes off. Power B is, is yes, your sure. enemy. Once you touch down and you're rolling out, power is now your enemy. So you want to make sure you're at idle. We roll for about three seconds. And we relax, we bend hold and forward pressure. We relax that forward pressure, and when the tail wants to come down, we then fly the tail down. Once the tail touches, this is where it's very important, the yoke comes all the way back. And I mean all the way back. Everybody goes, oh, I had it back. No, you don't. All the way back, like you're pulling it out of the instrument panel. That is very important to getting this airplane, especially in crosswinds, to do what you want. So we want that yoke all the way back. If we have a crosswind, we'll be slowly easing those ailerons into the stop. So you have it all the way back, all the way to the stops on rollout. In a crosswind, very important that once you land and you get into this position, get the airplane stopped. So many people go, I'm going to roll up to the next taxiway and turn off and the next thing they're ground looping the aircraft and going, what just happened? Well, I can tell you what just happened. They're so happy to be on the ground, they've taken all the control inputs out. They've released the back pressure, they've released the aileron, and the next thing, they get a gust, and they've now ground looped the airplane going, what just happened? So whenever you're in a crosswind, land, stop on the runway, get your flaps up if you did have some flaps out, and then taxi off the, uh, the runway. One thing on strong crosswinds, we do not want to use full flaps. You want to use 20 or no flaps. If it's a 20 knot crosswind, I'm using no flaps for takeoff and landing. The reason being is if the airplane starts to come around a little bit on you with full flaps, now that upwind flap is working just like a vertical stabilizer the air is grabbing it and it's helping to push you around more. So we want to use less flaps the stronger the crosswind. Do you have a, a range of speeds as far as when you would use partial flaps? So you say 20 knots, you wouldn't use any flaps at all? Correct. You would so, use 20 degrees of flaps up to what kind of wind so speed? So the book crosswind limit is 12 knots on the airplane. So anything above that, you're going to have your hands full. So anything over 12 knots, I'm going to be 20 degrees flaps um, on an aircraft that does not have a Robinson stole kit. If it has a Robinson stole kit, any crosswind is a no-flap takeoff and landing in my book. With a stock 
without Robinson stole, you can use 20 degrees of flaps or zero. The reason on the Robinson stole is if flaps come down, the ailerons come down, you lose aileron effectiveness. Perfect.